Darkstorm Industries makes some really cool rifles, including one of my personal longtime favorites, this Variant 1 non-NFA firearm. Look at the machining on this thing. All these angles and this depth. Really, really cool rifle. Very nice handling, very quick and sharp shooter. However, this isn't the topic of today's uh, video. Today we're going to go over their solution that lets even those living outside the constitutional United States, that's like California, New York, New Jersey, all those enemy states, if you will, have an AR-15 with their new 50-state legal AR. That's what's coming up next on GB Guns. The Darkstorm DS-15 is a pretty cool rifle in that, well, it's compliant with all 50 states, one way or another, thanks to a pretty nifty trick. If you haven't spotted it by now, I'll take another look. I wish I could show you the box this thing comes in, because you might notice there is no cardboard wear or lint or dirt on this thing, even though it's shipped from New York all the way out to Oregon. That's because they have a genius, beautiful display of a rifle box that sort of floats the gun inside the box, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Speaking of inside the box, you also get a traditional clamp-on trigger lock. These I find to be a bit more functional than the cable locks. Some lube, a decal, and a manual that I wanted to show you. Now we always go over handgun manuals. Don't often over rifle manuals because there's really not much worth mentioning in there. First off, they include the warnings that certain states require, but if you look at this, the font is nice and large. The colors are bright and crisp. The images are very high quality. And look at this, nice, smart, easy to follow lubrication instructions. They even have some uh, frequently asked questions in the back about what kind of ammo to use, things like that. It's a very thin booklet, simple booklet, but a worthwhile one that's actually worth reading, which is pretty cool. So props to them. Enough on that stuff, let's get to why you're here. The DS-15. We can show clear, obviously, because it had a chamber flag in it. But you might notice, if you hadn't yet, the lack of a magazine release. That's because this is a fixed mag lower. And by doing that, it basically escapes most of the restrictions out there. You know, when they talk about um, laws that prohibit you from having a functional rifle such as a pistol grip or things like that, it usually starts off with the removable magazine part. And by having this fixed mag, it's a 10 round P mag that's in there, I'm not sure how they secured it. Uh, I've taken a look and I'll show you guys uh, coming up um, what I can see in there, but it is in there and not coming out. That makes the rest of the restrictions, well, fly out the window. They've also done some things like there's no bayonet lug. See, instead you've got a railed gas block here. Nice melanite barrel. This is a 109 twist, 556 chambered uh, melanite barrel. Very beautifully done. We can see that our takedown and pivot pin are slightly extended. That's one way you could get to reloading it. Controls are standard and we've got Magpul furniture all the way around. Now how would you load something like this? That's what people like me living in the free parts of the country are curious about. You do have a nice extended pin here, as I showed you. There's also pretty cool devices like this one from a Bear Flag Defense that is essentially a stripper clip. You uh, pull this back, feed in, loads up 10 rounds and it shoves in through the ejection port. So when you're locked back empty, and this is fully loaded, shove it on here and slam down and it fills your mag. We will uh, demonstrate this when we do our range portion of the video on this gun. But for now I just wanted to give you a look at the build quality and you can see that even though this is a compliant rifle, it's no less of a rifle than in the other Dark Storm. I'm going to separate upper from lower and give you a look at build features. These Magpul stocks are pretty common. Uh, Dark Storm offers them in black or in FDE. Dark Storm's own lower receiver, as you can tell by 
the lack of any sort of magazine release. And while we're here, let's take a look inside this mag. I thought it was uh, an interesting setup. I'm curious as to why they went with the P mags and not um, a more durable magazine like a Dermag, for example. Uh, just because the polymer on these can give out over time. I don't know what you do when that happens. Um, but it's pretty rare. I mean, it, it can happen with few mags, but you got to really use them. And considering you're only shooting this 10 rounds at a time, maybe the lifespan of the magazine is not a concern. So, I have pulled out the guts, and you can see there's nothing in there protruding into the magazine that would cause any functionality issues. But it's held in. There's a little bit of up and down play. Not much else. Not sure how they did that. Um, curious design. Anyways, um, put this back together. The um, coating on the receivers, anodizing, is very nice. It's uh, done really well. The lower has the trigger guard integrated into it, which is really cool. It helped cut out uh, getting that patrol knuckle, if you will, down there. And it's a nice large open trigger guard. You can see obviously you can still knock out these pins and put an aftermarket trigger in if you want. We have nice staking on the castle nut there. Build quality just as beautiful as we've come to expect from Dark Storm. Take the upper. SOCOM profile barrel, 1 and 9 twist, as I mentioned. And it appears there's a light gray coating inside the receiver. Nothing mentioned on the website. I don't know if that is a um, special coating or not, but it reminds me of like the LMTs and the real high-end guns where it's kind of a dry film lubricant in there. This being chambered in 5.56, you can of course also shoot 223 without any issue. 223 Wild. Give you a look at our standard M16 carrier. Staking protrudes just enough onto the nuts. I don't pretend to be School of the American Rifle. I am just an end user and writer who observes things. Take a look at our bolt here. Firing pin out. Cam pin out. Magnetic particle inspected bolt. The camera will catch it it's right there. It looks to be in good shape. Let's see if we have the uh, updated as of, geez, what is it, two decades now? Extractors. We have both the donut and the center polymer piece in there. Come on, camera. I've heard some folks say they don't like to have both. Um, that's a personal preference. I'd rather have a gun come with both and remove one than have a gun come with neither and have to install them. So, everything looks clean there. Let me get this together and out of the way. And we're back. Sorry, I've uh, been hit pretty hard by the YouTube thought police lately who seem to think that field stripping and reassembling is constructing a firearm. So, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this gets video gets dinged <laughs> just like most of ours where we're just trying to help people understand safe incompetent operation of something as vital as a firearm. Looking at the upper, you can see uh, an etching there with the DSI logo, nice and tastefully there, letting you know this is indeed a Dark Storm upper receiver without plastering it too loud and obnoxiously. Handguard does attach using the classic method on front and rear, but uh, has a nice feel to it, nice swell. Don't see any unique heat shielding in there. Haven't spent a lot of time with this Magpul stuff. In fact, that might be heat shielding right there. Um, let me pop that open. All right, so having removed the lower handguard using the classic method of pulling back on this ring, the lower part drops out and you can see there is heat shielding there, which is pretty cool. It's a nice light aluminum heat shielding, just like the originals. And here's our beautiful SOCOM profile barrel. We've got not one, not two, but three screws holding that gas block on, so I don't think it's going anywhere. <laughs> it is railed if you want to toss a light up there, 
or use a front, traditional front sight post. One and nine twist, laser etched, and a standard A2 birdcage style flash hider. When we get this out to the range, we will be testing a variety of ammunition for accuracy in the system, not just the recommended 55 to 62 grain, but of course intentionally going heavier and lighter than listed in the name of finding out how it's really going to do. Uh, some rifles, you'd be surprised, with good ammo, uh, like to go more places, and it's nice to know that your rifle can. So that's why we do that. Get this handguard back together at a later time. I'm just going to hold it there for now. Um, haven't messed with the Magpul stuff too much because I'm just, you know, just haven't done it, especially these, these shorter ones. Um, but I thought it was really cool that Darkstorm went and did something like that for those of you living behind enemy lines uh, and presented an AR-15 that is compliant because it's not a detachable magazine that defeats most of the rest of the regulations out there. They, Darkstorm had one of these uh, a couple years back, you may recall we did a tabletop on it that was with billet. Uh, this is all with forged which helps cut down the light, uh, the weight and help this uh, handle a little more like a traditional AR-15 We'll do what we can with it uh, at the range, accuracy, and uh, we'll do our hot and cold barrel test as well. See how that SOCOM profile handles uh, a cold group versus a hot group and give you our feedback on it. Let me know what your thoughts are on this thing. I know previously there were some haters saying, oh yeah, you're just uh, bending to the will of the administration by uh, producing something like this and even showing it. And to that I say no. No, this is Americans fighting for the freedoms uh, that they still have. And this is giving an option to those who are living in those dictator states that don't believe in our basic civil rights. And well, in the past, how our civil rights won back, you need a tool to do it. And Darkstorm is producing options for that. those folks that are completely legal to be owned in those states allowing people to defend themselves and their family and to enjoy the shooting sports while waiting for freedom to come back. That's the DS-15 50 state compliant tabletop. Just a quick overview and a look at the gun before we get it out to the range and show you how it performs. Thanks for watching.